So who would you be without your financial trauma? What would you do? Today, we will address just that with my fabulous guest, Timea Nagy. Hello, Timea. How are you? Hi, I'm great. So if you are uh, familiar with this podcast and have been familiar for a couple of years or more, you have seen Timea in the past. We spoke finance, but she is today finance, but in a very different way. And she's going to explain what she's working on. But, you know, Timea really is a force of nature and not the cliche force of nature uh, that is tagged on everyone uh, getting out of bed in the morning and going to work. She's a force of nature that really was built in the deep fire of life from horrific abuse, trauma, deep poverty. I mean, she's an incredible woman and she made her mark in a space that is very different. She was an activist. She was raising awareness about human trafficking. And now she's still helping in a different way, but she's really helping others heal from financial trauma. And I cannot think about anything that would have a bigger impact on the world than healing us from our financial trauma. So she will share with us an incredible and life-changing insight. So hold on. So my name is Peggy Van der Plash. If you don't know me, uh, we are really focusing in this podcast on getting more in your life. My secret sauce is psychedelic power, professional and personal development. But I invite a lot of guests that are actually very like-minded individuals and that have, who are, sorry, on the same uh, length web. So today, Timea is going to tell us all about financial trauma. So Timea, I cannot wait to jump on that. I read your content. I looked at everything. I was just like, Ooh. so thank you so much for being here. It's truly my, my pleasure, Peggy. My pleasure to be on your podcast. Thank you for inviting me. No, that's fabulous. So let's dig right away. Let's talk about financial trauma. So first, what is it and how is it affecting really people suffering from it? I love when you said, what is it? So it's just what it says, financial trauma. But what's interesting about it is that we only came up with this term just most recently. And when I say most recently, I even only came across with the term just a year ago. So the research actually came out from the United States out of a university, which I can't tell you right now which one, but if you Google financial uh, trauma research, recent research, it's going to be all over. New York Times um, yeah. financial section did like a whole, I think two or three articles on just the financial trauma and the research and the studies. And what was really interesting is that the study is saying that financial trauma mirrors the similar effects on people like PTSD. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And the funny thing is nobody is surprised by that. When yeah. I say, you know what, dude, you have financial trauma. What does that mean? You can't sleep. You worry about money. You don't have appetite. You have depression. You have suicidal thoughts. And th yeah, that's it. Well, that's financial trauma when it's all about money. Can you believe that? And we just only put a name to it like a year ago? Yeah. And you know what I see with financial trauma, and I'm going to put myself in the equation. I was actually talking with one of my spiritual and emotional counselors this morning, connecting the dots. Uh, and by any stretch, I didn't have a situation comparable to yours. So I don't want to, uh, you know. but what I lived as a kid traumatized me greatly and it has influenced me in the way I manage and I should say mismanaged my money and so I think I hear what you're saying with financial trauma and the, the trauma of today of you know having challenges with your financial but I look at it as something that might have like any big T or small T impacted you your entire life and you might not even realize it. I love that you said that because when we talk about financial trauma, financial trauma is not something that you just developed overnight. I mean, there are 
financial situations. Yes. You yes, have financial it. crisis where you yeah. kind of work through it and you figure it out. But financial trauma actually caused, comes from different root causes. Financial trauma is actually based on generational trauma, meaning everything that you learned about money you learned subconsciously up until you were seven years old mm -hmm. from your household, right? And there is so much sci uh, scientific uh, backings to what I'm saying, but your subconscious mind is in a recording mode up until you're seven years old. Yeah. So in your household, how did people treat money? How did people talk about money? Yeah. Did they even talk about money? Was money the evil? Were you poor? You're going to die poor. You know, only rich people can do whatever that is, right? Yeah. Now, if you were rich, there's different type of rich. There's poor rich. There's rich who acts like poor. There's yeah. poor who acts like rich. I mean, even to that, there's so many differences. You couldn't grow up as a millionaire kid. But if you're if you were never given money to manage and handle then you have no idea how to be out in a big world. Then you comes the first time you have to pay rent. You have no idea how to do that, right? Yeah, so yeah. financial trauma is actually sees no culture, religion, you know, or or exactly. no matter where you come from, one way or another, if there was no healthy conversations around money in your household up until you were seven years old, you most likely have financial trauma and you acting out of those belief systems yeah, yeah. that was implemented in your subconscious programming and you don't even know you have it. The other side of it is when it comes to generational trauma, if you look at seven different cultures, right? The African-American, the African-Canadian, the indigenous culture, the, you know, Eastern Europeans like me, mm -hmm. we grew up you know, very, very, very poor and very limited funding and financial crisis all the time, one after another. Yeah. So I was 46 years old, which was last year when I first heard about financial trauma. And then when I first heard that it had something to do with generational trauma, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. coming from Eastern Europe, believe me, we yeah. have 2,700 years of generational trauma. So I love that you said that. We have it when we don't even know what it's coming from so yeah. well and you know you mentioned a few things religion so i was i'm sure you're catholic as well coming from yeah. Eastern europe well by 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 default but, but i don't practice under, yeah like my yeah. husband under ussr there was not a lot of religion but by default i should say but you know uh I was raised Catholic and I grew up in a very Catholic environment. I went to Catholic school from kindergarten to my master. And money is not something that is, you know, abundance, wealth, that is not something that is very supported, to say the least, <laughs> by the Catholic Church. And I was also raised in that part of France that is very blue collar. And there is a lot of limiting belief, like... Uh, Oh, we don't have money, but we have family. And you're like, what the fuck does that mean? You can have both. But, you know, it's all these things that have been told also to manipulate people. So you're not pushing back on being underpaid, on being exploited. So you, all, you have all this crap that you need to kind of untangle. Well, I love that you say that one of the things that I grew up with is that rich people are evil. Well, exactly. We all so what, what we were taught in our household is that rich people who drive cars and have nice things, they are evil. So you can you never want to be rich and you never want to have a car because only or and not just evil, they are also criminals. Exactly. The story so when, I was going to say. <laughs> right. And so years and years later, I came to Canada. Of course, I bought my first car eventually. And my mom came to visit. And I said, Mom, you sure you want to get in a criminal's car? <laughs> and she was a former cop, right? So she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you used to tell us that rich people who have cars and nice things, they're also criminals. She goes, I never said that. I'm like, oh, yes, <laughs> you did. <laughs> you had your recorder on. And, and you know, before we jump to the next question, I mean, I could have this topic for two hours, but you're talking about what we hear, what we see. But you know what I, what I remember a lot as a kid, and my mother was a single mother. So even if she was talking to us, there was not a lot of 
adult conversation in the house, you know, and but you could feel the energy of fear and scarcity. And it's not so the lady this morning was like, Well, what did you hear? What I'm like, I didn't see, I felt, and that's almost worse, I guess, because it kind of it's this wave of panic energy, yes. So it's, I love every point he hit. So when I went down in this rabbit hole of healing, I got to the bottom of financial trauma. So the very bottom of financial trauma is generational trauma, childhood trauma, which is what the program that's put in your subconscious, right? But it's also the hormones. So what you're describing is you felt fear, Mm -hmm. therefore you potentially deep inside were afraid don't know what you are afraid of but but the the teachings that I I dig in which is why I eventually ended up wanting to teach all this myself is you have to know where you come from you have to know ep- what epigenetics is yes biologically what did you inherit from your ancestors because I don't know if the listeners are aware but we it's called Indigenous people call it the blood trauma. But even before you were born in your third trimester of your mom's pregnancy, you were already being fed in your mom's womb with all those hormones. And if your mom was afraid constantly and, and stressed, then the stress hormones would be released which is basically how you're fed, which is why when you are young, so young, you don't even know why, but you just feel scared and unworthy and uncertainty, but you don't even know this why. And then add on your childhood, you know, your whole childhood, whatever that might be, and then the programming in your subconscious. So you basically are carrying hundreds and hundreds of years of pain. And you, by the time you ten. You don't even know why, but you just like shy and you have anxiety and you don't know what's going on. And like me, it took me 40 something years to learn all this. But the good news is that you can heal all this. But the number one is, which is what we talk about in financial trauma recovery, you need to go on a self discovery, a self-awareness journey, who you are, where are you from? What are you carrying inside of you? Because until you know what is your problem, how on earth are you supposed to heal it, right? Exactly. I love your saying that. So for people who are listening and who are like, okay, that is totally me. So what do you want to say to that person? Great. You can heal. What's your message? My message is go on a discovery, find out who you are, where you're from, where where your family, what's your ancestors, find out what's in your blood, what did you inherit, Mm -hmm. and try to sit down and figure it out your inner child, who's your inner child, and, and when it comes to financial trauma, what programming was put in your subconscious while your brain was still just in recording mode, because that's what the child brain is. What is your programming? And when you find it out, black and white, then you'll know that it's almost to T. It matches your today's behavior. Mm-hmm. And once you figure it out, what what your programming is, then you can go back. And there are so many ways of alternative healing. You are a promoter of one of them, right? Mm-hmm. And and for those of you who are shying away from psychedelic stuff. There is cognitive therapy. There is somatic therapy. There is hypnotherapy. There's so many ways. And But first and foremost, I would talk to a financial um, trauma therapist because they will be able to give you this guidance, mm-hmm. kind of like a roadmap to your healing. That's that's amazing. I didn't even know there was financial trauma therapist right? with you. So, you know, and, and like you, I was not, I knew you could have trauma from finance, but I never heard the concept of financial trauma before. So it's 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 great that you're I'm sure uh, explaining that for many people who are in the same situation than us not that long ago. Um, so one thing you mentioned, obviously, self-discovery. Would you have what would be, you know, the top three advice 
for someone who's thinking, oh, I definitely have financial trauma, anything uh, you would recommend? You know what? Like I said, I the number one thing I would do is take out a notebook mm -hmm. and write down the areas that you think you have a problem with when it comes to finances. What do you have a problem? Do you have problems saving? Do you have? Do, are you off? And before even thinking about the what do you have problem with? The number one thing: what are your thoughts about money? Mm -hmm. What is your mindset? Yeah. What do you think about money? Are you afraid of money? Do you think you have enough? Do you think you don't have enough? If you have enough today, say you are a millionaire. I have a lot of friends; they are doing really well and have done really well. But some of them are worried every single day yes. that what happens, right? So, exactly. like I said, you can be rich and think like a poor person. You can be terrified of losing. That's financial trauma too. So, write down your thoughts around money mm -hmm. and trace it back. Where do you think it's coming from? Where is your thoughts around money and feelings? Yes. I was Your thoughts and feelings, that. I can guarantee that 90% is around fear. It's yeah. probably fear. Why are you so afraid of having or losing or not having? Where are those fears? Are, what are you based your fears? And, and if I may say, I would say the, the physical sensation as well that, uh, you know, with these thoughts and feelings, because so this morning I was thinking about money and I do a lot of work on money because it's one of the big nuts for me. It's so connected with my childhood. And I was literally feeling like puking. That's how much of a physical reaction working on money was giving me. So you're absolutely right. The thoughts drives it's the thoughts drives the feelings and the physical sensation, but the other way around as well, because your your nervous system has been encoded. So it's a chicken and egg. Well, it's the way Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about is thinking is feeling, feeling is thinking. Mm -hmm. So if you start thinking about, oh my God, I don't have enough. Now your brain starts sending a signal through your blood. So the brain releases a stress hormone. Yeah, the cortisol come, yeah. And a hormone goes right through your body, through your blood which goes down to your nervous system. And then you get a signal of, oh, we don't feel good about this. Yeah. So thinking is feeling. And then you start feeling really, really bad about it. And that feeling is sending back another message to your brain. And now you start going into this vicious cycle. Oh my God, I'm going to lose my house. Oh, I'm sick to my stomach. What am I supposed to do? And you go into this bad cycle and you're just spinning back and forth. This is so bad, 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 bad. And all you're doing the whole time is releasing more stress hormones, which makes you feel worse, which sending more signal. So thinking is feeling, feeling is thinking, thinking is feeling. So what we usually say is stop, stop, stop thinking. Stop thinking negatively in the moment. Take a moment and look around and think about positive things. What do you have in this moment? Not what you're going to lose in the future. What do you have in this moment? And the other reason why we usually ask, stop, stop that, stop the thinking. Because what happens is when you try to think out of crisis, that means the blood is out of crisis, yeah. no longer flows into your conscious brain, which is where all the answers are, like the healthy, positive, informative answers. No, the blood goes into your subconscious. And the problem is with that, if 90% of the world, which we are, 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 have been programmed with fear, which we have, then basically when you go in crisis, you cut off the blood supply from the conscious mind. So you go into subconscious and that's where you start thinking out of fear and yeah. crisis. So which fight is why we, right, fight or flight. So which is why we say stop, yeah. take a deep breath, take a look at the sun. I love think tapping. About some, and, tapping. And, and tapping yourself, bring it's yourself a, back. Well, that's, I learned yeah. that great technique because you're right. The blood goes from the prefrontal to uh, the, the, the back of the brain, which is the survival. But if you put your fingers and you press, it makes the blood come back. So it's a great way to interrupt this pattern. So the you're kind of confusing 
the signal and the cortisol delivery. But you're right, you need to stop the cycle, not just this idea of being positive, but this idea of interrupt the cortisol flowing in your body. Thank you so much for mentioning that because, you know, very usually we go with this mindset BS or toxic positivity, but here you're really connecting it to the physicality of it. Yeah. And I love when you say toxic positivity. I totally, I totally can relate to that. I'm not asking people to go from zero to 10 from I'm about to lose my heart and sit in, sit in your Zen and think about how beautiful this world is. And you're going to get a mention. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there is a chance that yes, you are losing your house right now, but there's nothing you can do about it. And you stressing about out about it even more, that's definitely not helping. So take a deep breath, take a deep breath and think about, okay, where can I go from here? Where's the next step? Like baby steps, right? Mm -hmm. But, and I'm speaking from experience. It's yeah. not like I'm sitting yeah. in some big chair yeah. on in cloud nine yeah. Yeah. and say, this is how you should do it. Yeah. I have experienced many, many different type of crisis. I have lost my house. I was homeless. I did that. And I trust me, since I know the better way to live, which is this, anytime something really, really, really bad comes up, I stop the thinking process. And I'm going to tell you something. When I stop that negative spiral and I just start focusing on Anything that's positive around me, like mm -hmm. I'm breathing, I still have two legs. I'm, you know, things always just work out. Yeah. Things just always end up working out with this new technique. So I'm not saying I'm going to get a castle or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But things just work out. Yeah. Well, and you know, the challenge with stress is that it prevents you to think clearly. So when you are imprisoned in stress, so first it damages your health, that's obvious, but also you cannot see the options. So there might be one or two options for you to save your house or to whatever is the situation you're in, but when you're in that contractive mode and that stress mode, you cannot see them. No. And I think what you're mentioning is really helpful for people to who are listening today to understand that it is also a physical, it's not just in your mind, it's in your blood. It is. And then just one more thing to that when it comes to crisis, whether it's financial or any other crisis, but since we're talking about financial, I have had my fair share of being at the bottom and up and bottom, like mainly at the bottom. But since I started applying these new techniques, these new healing methods, the new way of being, because yeah. it's not just a one-off thing. You have to live and breathe this new way of being. Change your identity. The, I mean, it is. The minute you wake change. up, you have to start doing these yeah. things and you have to really watch your thoughts and implement everything that you learn. So one of the things that I realized is that crisis is actually not a crisis crises are there for you to really learn something and I know this sounds bad but it's true so what I'm going to tell and what I'm going to say to the listeners is sit down and think about all the terrible things that happened to you in your past all of them terrible terrible things and think about what happened after in the next two years in your life I can promise you right now no matter how terrible it is, it was no matter what happened, there was always a little bit of a gift that came out of it. Mm -hmm. Rather, you know, you had a breakup and it was terrible in the moment and you ended up moving to the other side of the country and you met some incredible people. You got a new yeah. job and you met the love of your life. I mean, when I look back on some terrible tragedies that I experienced, including human trafficking. I mean, huh. but then I look at my life today, I will take human trafficking. I would do it all over again. Yeah, I so, know. Yeah. so we can't deny the fact that every time when we are put in a situation, it really is there for us to grow one way or another, even 
even when it comes to grief, Mm -hmm. like I lost both of my parents and, you know, my cat, my dog. I mean, there are so many people I lost. And eventually I just look back and after every loss, there was always some beautiful gift that came out of life. So I don't know. And even if, even if that's not how it is, but it is, I think we just have to have some kind of a positivity to, to, to hold on to, because otherwise then what is the point? You know, yeah. what's the point to be here? Well, you know, I, I what I learned is that you have to process the emotion and you don't want to jump from, I, I lost something that was dear to me, whatever it is, whether it's a person, a situation, a job, house, whatever, it doesn't matter. Or you experience something terrible and, and you go directly to the gift. I think it's, you know, spending time with the grief, the disappointment, all of that is necessary. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just pushing it down and yeah. it's going to pop up uh, at some point in an ugly way. But you're right. I think any anything that happened, and maybe it's also resiliency. I think some people maybe at some point never get up again, you know, and then there is no gift. But I really want to go deeper in your courses, your speaking engagements, or people can work with you because I'm pretty sure many people who are listening now are thinking, okay, <laughs> I've been suffering for that for too long. Uh, here is someone who uh, has done it and it could help me with that. So can you give us some pointers of all people? Yeah. Absolutely. You. Thank you. Yeah. So, and you, I agree with you. When something terrible happens, I always say, feel your feelings, spend time there. And when you're ready, release them. But just as long as you know that the sun always comes out after mm-hmm. the rain, that's all right. But in terms of the courses, so we are releasing October 24th, 2024, we're releasing a course called Trauma Lab. And it's going to be the first kind of course before we release the financial course but trauma lab is basically the um foundation that we suggest anybody who wants to take the financial uh trauma course to take the trauma lab first okay uh because it yeah you just it's a foundation that you kind of need unable to understand the financial trauma now that being said if you take the trauma lab you're already going to have some amazing realizations and awareness and understanding of your financial mindset as well. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I would start with the trauma lab. It's coming out October 24th. It's on TC online Institute, which is our um, online platform. And I'll put it, I'll put it on the show notes so people can, can, uh, can look at that. So we can, we, we were interested can start with the lab. So the lab is going to give us some realization. Is it an online program? It is an online program. It's 97 minutes. It's okay. 10 episodes. So nine episodes okay. and one bonus. Okay. But the videos are so well digestible um, minutes. So each video is about seven to 10 minutes. Gotcha. And uh, we already show it to uh, a, a private audience and they think everybody should watch this on the yeah, planet. I'm sure, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, the, I, I said this in a course and I'm going to say this again. The root of all evil is not money. It's unresolved trauma and financial trauma. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the root of all evil. And so it would Absolutely. be nice to heal everyone all at once and we would be just walking on roses and rainbows. But but you know, what I love with, with money and finance is that you can work your way through healing via money. And to be totally honest, what brought me to more you know, healing, spirituality, personal development in my life was the greed and the desire for more money. And I was just like, it's not working. What's happening? And then I realized, oh, it's because I have all these blocks about money. And as I started unpacking that, it actually, you know, helped me in any area of my life. So 
I really, really love that because most of us, we think, what is the biggest problem in our life? It's money. And which is probably not true, but that's what we think. That's the society we built. And going through money, I think, is genius because it doesn't matter where you're coming from. You're going to do healing. You're going to do your own work anyway. I could not agree with you more. I started my healing journey uh, around 2005, and it was because I I was tired of being broke. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But on the journey, you have no choice but really dig deeper and deeper and deeper. And if you don't clean out that basement, what I usually say, and then at the end of the day, when now I'm at the place like I actually don't even care about money. <laughs> but it's yeah. I just wanted to I guess I just wanted to heal and when I say I don't care it means I have more than enough and it's not about the money anymore now I just want to keep on going and yeah. keep healing myself yeah, so exactly exactly but I think it's such a great route for people to uh to to heal themselves so Anything else, Timea, you want to share with the audience? Uh, as I said, I'll put on the show notes, link to your website, links to uh, everything they can look and find you. Anything you want to share? All I just want to say is that if you are already listening to Peggy's podcast, you are, I think, uh, well on your way, whatever you're heading. And uh, healing journey is a very personal thing. Everybody have their own personal timeline. You're not on a, anybody's schedule, but yours. And what I would just say is please take your time. And But it's worth it. Just don't give up on yourself because when you get to places, I think life can be really, truly so delicious. And I think I never knew life can be so delicious until I gone through all this healing journey, especially in the last two years. And life does not have to be that difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So just keep on going. Best of luck to you. Just keep getting up. Just remember the sun comes out after the rain. And yeah, and if we helped in any tiny, and I'm I'm always interested to learn about others healing journey, anything that you have, uh, that you can offer or suggest, please find me, look me up, send me an email message. I love learning. So I think we never stop learning. So um, I'm a good student too. So if any of you have any good suggestions, books to read, materials, I'd love to hear them. <laughs> thank you so much, Jimmy. It's really, really lovely. So thank you so much for your time. I really think that people who are watching, listening to the, will have a better understanding of First, what is financial trauma? Do we have financial trauma? But also the fact that this is not a curse. They can they can change their situation. And you did, and many people did. And, and I, I really think that, you know, going for money is always uh, the shortest route to anyone's art. So <laughs> going for the wallet is the shortest route. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah, thank you so much, Jimmy. Have a wonderful day and thank you for your insight. It was great. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.